Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the Kato SD80 Mac. This is a Norfolk Southern locomotive and Kato and the Kobo shops have just released both the locomotive with uh, ESU Loke Sound. So this is Loke Sound equipped DCC equipped right out of the box. So we'll take a look at what you get in this Kato SD80 Mac at HO scale starting right now. MSRP on this bad boy is $295. Obviously, you got discounts at online retailers, brick and mortar hobby shops. You have a quick reference guide, Kato custom quick reference guide showing you functions F0 through F18, different horns that you can put in through CVs. Again, this is ESU Loak Sound equipped. So we have the locomotive here, pulling out of the box for the first time. Looks like just some foam at the end here, but nice Norfolk Southern scheme completely ready to go with the Kobo shops. That means you have the actual handrails all installed and everything else. Now, if you buy just the regular DC versions, you have to install all the accessories and parts yourself. But if not, Co Kobo does it for you. It's really a good deal in terms of um, getting all those parts installed because Kato locomotives do come with, with the, just the DCC. They, you have to install parts and it can be a little meticulous. So let's take a closer look at the detail. Put this locomotive on the turntable so we can take a quick look at some detail. You have the windshield wipers are installed. They're like plastic windshield wipers, separately applied grabs, sand filler hatches up here, a cab entry door with a window, separately applied grab up front, going all the way up and down. You've got stanchions that are nice and sturdy, some of the most sturdy plastic stanchions I've ever seen. Safety chain there, MU air hoses, uh, MU and air hoses going behind the snow plow here. You've got a coupler, appears to be plastic. Got the nice safety yellow going there. Paint looks like it's evenly applied. Safety tread on the front. You've got the radial AC SD80 Mac logo along the side there. You have a cab interior without cab figures, uh, one color cab interior, ice skate antenna up top, grab irons up top, working down the side you see the nice truck detail, fuel tank, safety tread going along the side, again these very very sturdy plastic handrails, some of the best plastic handrails I've seen on, on a model in terms of sturdiness, there's no waving or anything like that going on. Norfolk Southern along the side, warning labels along the side, you've got the vents here, compartment doors, You've got the radiator grills here, a flared radiator on this. You have the three fans on the back, the top. As we look at the back, try to get it in the focus a little bit. Norfolk Southern horse logo on the back here with this protruding area back here. You've got rear lights. These are LEDs front and rear. More air hoses, MU hoses on the back. You've got the uh, fan grills right here, not see-through, but they are nicely detailed. Got the exhaust up here, horn, again Norfolk Southern, got the white sill going along the side. No cab sunshade, I believe that's actually correct for the real thing out there. That's just a real quick rundown of some, not all, of the features and detail of this locomotive. Okay, so I've got track power applied. Um, with the Loke sound, it says that F8 turns the prime mover on, so I'm gonna hit that now. Slightly off the track there. So that is the startup sequence for the F8. Um, another thing that they do with the Kobo shops is they put the cab number in for you a lot of times. So that's why it was a slight delay. I had to check whether it was on front on three address or the cab number. Listen to some sounds, Bell F1. Horn F2.
Like I've mentioned on a lot of my ESU reviews, the horn's extremely responsive. There is sometimes a short horn programmed in, but a lot of times just hitting F2 quickly will create a short horn for you so you don't have to have a different function. It's just that responsive. F3's coupler clank. F F4 dynamic brake. So you gotta get it moving to hear the dynamic brake. So there's F4 and there's several other functions going all the way up. Let's quickly listen to some manual notching up, which is F9. So there you have your manual notching up F9 to notch down as F10. We'll skip over that. Some other functions of the uh, spitter valve can be slow or fast, F16 and F17. And then of course hitting F8 again will turn all the prime mover sounds off. As you can see from a distance here, we got an LED headlight, nice golden white. LED ditch lights, nice golden white again. So we're going to go ahead and move this thing um, at on the 128 speed step scale, just one speed step. You can listen to motor noise since we don't have the, the actual sounds on. Keep in mind this hasn't been broken in, but I'm looking right now for any hesitation at one speed step getting very very little hesitation very smooth so far just one little bit of initial hesitation two speed steps three four and five if you listen closely my microphone is really sensitive so I'll pause for a second and you can listen for motor noise I am just noticing a very very tiny tiny bit but it's very silent Up to 10 speed steps now, completely smoothed out, but it wasn't really jerking at all anyway. So we're going to stop right there, just barely in frame. I'm going to go in reverse and check that out at one speed step. Little bit of hesitation, not much. Two. Yeah, there's not much hesitation really. I'm not not seeing any jerkiness. Three, four, and five. So we'll go back and forward again. I'm gonna put sound back on. We're gonna blow the horn. 
See if the ditch lights oscillate. And we're moving. So no oscillating disc lights. I don't know if that's limited function for the decoders, but I do know most Norfolk Southern locomotives have oscillating ditch lights, so take it or leave it. I don't know if that's adjustable or not. Uh, I don't know that much about ESU low sound decoders and the adjustability of that or if the functions are limited. So rear lights work as well, so I just switched in reverse, but I really like the golden white LED. So we'll shut her back down. Notice on the front there are a couple of cut levers, which I forgot to mention. I usually mention those because sometimes they don't put them on. Jacking pads, things like that on the uh, locomotive that I didn't really mention on the overview part of the detail. Now, it's kind of meticulous work putting all these grab irons in, but Kobo Shops does that for you, which is pretty cool because I hate doing that stuff on Kato locomotives. So it's cool that it's done for you. But hey, if you're somebody that likes to actually do some modeling, some work on your own, the DC versions have all those parts that you can put on yourself. So that wraps up this review of the Cato SD80 Mac. Norfolk Southern Scheme, of course. I like the fact that they've come out with this. They've had them out for several years. I like the fact that Kobo Shops started doing sound and assembling everything for us for a nominal fee. When you think about it, MSRP difference is not that much. It's a hundred bucks for both all the detail to be applied and sound and the speaker and all the jazz that comes with it. Not to mention that Loke Sound is one of the best sounds out there. Um, but your only other option for SD80 Max is brass. So it's pretty cool that uh, Cato made these available, even though, like I said, they've been on the market for a while, but they're making them available again with sound. And this isn't the only scheme. There's other schemes available as well. Um, so it's pretty cool that they are doing that. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're looking to get this thing, again, don't let the MSRP scare you. There's always discounts at brick and mortar and online retailers. I'm going to leave you with a quick run by. I don't have much NS rolling stock, so I'll just throw on a few pieces to run by. But you can see this thing in action, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.